Progress continues on the rocket stove project. What we've done in the Instrumentation 263 course, the Control Strategies course, is we have implemented this rocket stove control system with cascade control, where a temperature PID controller is the master and a flow controller for airflow is the slave. Now to make this work, we actually had to build our own flow transmitter. We are using here a standard muffin style fan, cooling fan, with a 120 volt AC motor. The residual magnetism in the rotor of this motor is strong enough that when it spins like a windmill, it makes AC sine waves that are measurable. We take these AC waves through a shielded cable. We found out that it's a very important shieldless cable. Ran the cable up over here into a circuit board inside this enclosure that amplifies the signal and basically turns into a much stronger square wave. Then there's another circuit board inside the same enclosure that divides the frequency of that square wave by uh, the number four. It's a four to one frequency divider. It turns out that the pulses output by this fan were happening at too fast of a rate for our PLC to be able to uh, intercept them without the use of a high speed counter. So we did the frequency division with the circuit board and hardware, and now one of the inputs to this PLC is turning on and off, toggling on and off with the, uh, the fan as it spins. So. Now that we have an input of airflow into here, we can have a separate PID control instruction, which will take that airflow signal, compare it against a set point it gets from the temperature PID instruction, and then thereby control airflow. The idea being that whenever we throw new pieces of wood into the rocket stove, those new pieces of wood tend to choke off the air passageway and tends to restrict airflow. So what's going to happen is the airflow controller will sense that restriction. It will immediately bump up the speed on our fan and by doing so it will compensate for that new load, that new restriction, hopefully before we see any impact on the temperature inside the furnace. Now to make the cascade control work in the PLC program, since we're using standard ladder logic, it's really quite simple. We just have a PID instruction here for temperature and we have a PID instruction here for airflow. We want the temperature to be the master and we want the airflow to be the slave. That means the output of the temperature controller must become the set point for the airflow controller. And here's how we do it. We simply do it by assigning the proper addresses. So right here on the temperature PID instruction, the control variable, that is the output, goes to register N7 colon 12. Notice when we come down here, uh, the process variable here for uh, fan PID is N7 colon 10. Two registers away from that, N7 colon 12, is the set point in the data structure of this PID instruction. So simply by putting the output variable here to the right uh, memory address, register, we're able to send the output of that controller to become the set point of that one. It's as simple as that, doing cascade control in an Allen Bradley with PID instructions. So now the temperature PID loop, or the temperature PID instruction is only looking at the temperature of the furnace as deciding do I need more or less airflow. It then sends a signal which becomes a set point to the airflow controller the airflow controller then looks at the spinning turbine that we put on there and says, is it flowing as fast as we want it to flow? And if it isn't, it changes the speed of that motor to induce a different amount of draft in the stack to get the airflow where we want it to be. And that's our cascade control system.